Welcome to another video presentation of the Stereotactic Academy. My name is Aris de Merola and I'm an Associate Professor of Neurology at Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center. And my role today will be discussing DBS programming using Informity. Informity is a proprietary tool software developed by Abbott Laboratories with the goal of streamlining the monopolar review of directional and non-directional electrodes. Before entering into my presentation, uh, I want to introduce my disclosures, some of which uh, are relevant to this topic. In particular, I received the speaker honoraria from Abbott Laboratories, as well as a B, Medtronic, and Travance Biopharma. Also, I received grant support from Lundbeck and from AbV. In order to understand the functionality of informity, we need to introduce a couple of key uh, critical concepts. The first one is uh, the anatomy of the DBS directional lead. We see that the DBS directional lead consists of four different levels of stimulation, of which level 1 and level 4, the most ventral and the most dorsal, uh, are characterized by being a, a full ring contact while the two intermediate levels of stimulation, level 2 and level 3, are uh, uh, further divided into three equally spaced uh, segments or electrodes that allows uh, to deliver uh, uh, directional stimulation. The second point uh, is that the volume of tissue activated or the VTA generated by omnidirectional versus directional electrodes uh, significantly differ from the fact of being uh, axially symmetric so equally distributed uh, uh, on all of the direction of the electrodes versus axially asymmetric, which means uh, that the VTA, in the case of directionality, is uh, preferentially pushed towards one of the direction of the electrodes. This concept is critical for understanding the full potentiality of directional programming. With these concepts in mind, we can move into the core of programming, which is understanding the differences in therapeutic windows. With therapeutic window, we indicate uh, the difference uh, in the stimulation intensity between what is called therapeutic current strength, which corresponds to the minimal stimulation intensity in order to achieve complete benefit, and the side effect threshold, which corresponds to the stimulation intensity that is sufficient to cause persistent side effects. The difference between the intensity of stimulation uh, for these two different conditions uh, is called the therapeutic window. And uh, we need uh, to uh, keep into our mind that the therapeutic window can be very, very different when we go with between uh, um, omnidirectional programming, uh, as in this case, um, as compared to uh, directional programming, as in this other case. In fact, the directional programming allows uh, creating completely different VTA shapes, uh, and this can result uh, in completely different uh, therapeutic windows. The final concept uh, that needs to be uh, acknowledged before moving into the informity platform uh, is the fact that uh, activating one single segment versus activating uh, uh, the three uh, addition segments uh, can result in very different uh, volume of tissue activated. In fact, when we activate one single segment, we are basically pushing the entire energy, in this case 1.5 milliamps, into a very small surface, and this increases the current density. And therefore, since the current density is the main factor driving the dimension and the shape of the VTA, this results in a greater VTA volume as compared to when uh, we dilute this uh, uh, stimulation intensity, in this example 1.5 milliamp, uh, over three adjacent electrodes, in which case uh, we're probably going to have uh, 0.5 milliamps uh, distributed on uh, each one of the three adjacent electrodes. Finally, uh, we need to consider that uh, when we activate one single segment, uh, so what is called uh, SSA or single segment activation, uh, we are achieving a full directionality. While uh, if we distribute uh, the activation on two addition segments, uh, which can be called uh, uh, co-activation, uh, we are losing most uh, of the opportunities offered by uh, the directional systems. In fact, uh, uh, the extent of directionality that is achieved uh, by the co-activation of two addition segments uh, is significantly lower, partly because uh, the two addition segments uh, has a tendency of uh, covering also the area that uh, is not covered uh, by the only segment that remain deactivated. 
Moving to the Informity platform, uh, uh, we see that uh, when uh, using our clinician programmers, uh, we click on Informity, uh, this screen appears in front of us. In this screen, we can see different elements. Uh, uh, starting from the top and going to the bottom, uh, uh, we see first uh, on the top left uh, the indication of uh, which uh, side of the body we're treating, in this case, uh, left uh, SDN. And then on the right, uh, we see an indicator that the stimulation is on. Uh, then there is this very important part, uh, which is uh, represented by this line. In uh, uh, We can see 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 that indicates uh, the intensity of stimulation uh, that we are testing at that moment. And uh, the green bar uh, uh, progressive increases uh, as long as we keep on pushing on the, uh, on the plus button at a step size uh, that can be personalized, uh, uh, and in this case is uh, 0.25 milliamps. The critical point of programming through informity is basically testing uh, and reporting on this bar uh, uh, when the benefits occur, and we can mark uh, partial benefits uh, as well uh, as uh, complete benefits that are displayed later as a dash uh, in the lighter blue versus uh, uh, a full uh, blue color. And uh, going up, uh, we can also display when partial side effects or transient side effects occur. Again, uh, this is a more pale orange versus a persistent side effects of cure, and this is uh, with a full uh, uh, orange uh, uh, ball. An interesting uh, aspect is that as soon as we click uh, on the button side effect, uh, Informity automatically reduces the intensity of stimulation uh, by one step size uh, in order for the patient not to experience any side effect uh, while we are documenting uh, in, uh, in the box uh, uh, the potential side effect uh, that we encountered. The base of informity is uh, to uh, test uh, each different level of stimulation, uh, so starting from level 1, which is not directional, so doesn't offer the opportunity of testing any of the three directions, but uh, based on the informity monopolar review, we're also going to test level 2 and level 3 as uh, uh, non-directional at first. And then later we move to level four. Once we identify the most efficient level of stimulation, at that point uh, we can go back uh, and test uh, each one of the three directions represented by uh, the letter A, B, and C. And we test both the non-directional and the directional electrodes using the same critical principle. The only thing that we're gonna change uh, when we switch from directional into non-directional uh, is the step size. In fact, uh, we are going to prioritize uh, smaller step size uh, when we go with small directional contacts for the fact uh, that uh, a small increase in the step size uh, on a smaller surface uh, can result uh, in higher current density. And therefore, we know that uh, using a smaller step size, uh, we can appreciate better uh, changes, clinical changes that may occur. While uh, using a larger step size, uh, we may skip some of these clinically relevant changes, and in other words, uh, not having a very functional and efficient programming. The way uh, the directionality is uh, displaced with informity uh, is basically represented on this polar graph that we see on the left side, in which we can appreciate uh, where there is uh, uh, represented as a circle, a blue circle in the center, the therapeutic current strength for the non-directional stimulation, and an orange circle, a little bit on the outside, representing the threshold for side effects. Then later, we can see how the clinical benefits can be plotted on this polar graph for the three directions, A, B, and C. And this is represented by these dots. The blue dots represent the threshold for clinical benefits, and uh, the orange dot represent the threshold for side effects. We see that uh, in the direction A, uh, there is a, a decent therapeutic window, but not too large, between uh, uh, the blue and uh, the orange. This therapeutic window becomes uh, a little bit larger when we go in the direction B, and becomes uh, significantly larger when we go in the direction C. So a first inspection of this uh, polar graph uh, can immediately tell us uh, which one is the direction that uh, offers the best uh, therapeutic windows. 
when programming with informity, we are going to compare different therapeutic windows. But we can appreciate the fact that uh, uh, the therapeutic window can present in many different aspects. Uh, so in a way, the therapeutic window can be expressed as uh, how wide is the therapeutic window. So how wide is the programming range? Let's say that we have a therapeutic current strength uh, starting at 2 milliamps uh, and a side effect threshold uh, starting at 3 milliamps. Uh, we can have a therapeutic window of 1 milliamp between 2 and 3. But the other aspect uh, is uh, what is uh, the therapeutic current strength? So having a therapeutic window of 1 milliamps between 2 and 3 is significantly different uh, than having a therapeutic window of 1 milliamp uh, that, however, starts at 1 and finishes at 2. So the concept of uh, the therapeutic window divided by the therapeutic current strength uh, or uh, what we call therapeutic window percentage uh, is a critical concept uh, for identifying uh, what is the most effective electrodes for programming. In fact, uh, we want to prioritize uh, those electrodes that present uh, a relatively wide therapeutic window, but more importantly, the best ratio between the therapeutic window programming range uh, and the minimal therapeutic current strength that is needed in order to have clinical benefits. In a scenario like the one presented in this cartoon, we see a situation in which we require a relatively high energy or therapeutic current strength in order to achieve clinical benefits, but then later we immediately run into some side effect, and this is represented by the fact that we have a small therapeutic window. So this is overall uh, the worst case scenario, a scenario in which we need to deliver a, a high amount of energy in order to have clinical benefits, uh, but uh, shortly after we immediately run into side effects. The second scenario is represented in this cartoon, in which we start uh, having a, a good therapeutic current strength. So we can have a good clinical benefit uh, starting at 1 milliamp or 1.5, 1.2, 1.3 milliamps. So uh, we are close to the soft spot. Uh, however, the programming range uh, expressed by the therapeutic window is rather small. So despite the fact that, that uh, we start having good benefit uh, uh, at a low amplitude, uh, we uh, run into side effects uh, after a few fractions of milliamps. In this uh, scenario, even though uh, it's positive uh, because we are close to the soft spot, uh, it is also negative because it doesn't give us uh, enough uh, uh, ability, enough room for programming uh, before running into disabling side effects. The third case scenario is the one in which uh, we are not close to the soft spot, so we need to deliver a high energy in order to achieve clinical benefits, and so we have a high therapeutic current strength. However, we have the positive aspect that we are far away from structures causing side effects. So uh, this uh, is reflected by the fact that we have a wide therapeutic window. So before running into side effects, uh, uh, we have uh, probably more than 1 milliamp, or we have 1.5 or maybe 2 or even more milliamps uh, before uh, inducing a disabling side effect. This scenario, even though it's characterized by a good therapeutic window, remains suboptimal for the fact that the amount of energy required to deliver a clinical benefit is probably too high to be effective. And finally, we have the optimal scenario. This is the scenario in which we have clinical benefits starting a low energy, so low therapeutic current strength. And this tells us that we are close to the soft spot. But then uh, we also have a wide therapeutic window, which means that uh, we can keep on increasing uh, the uh, stimulation intensity by at least 1 milliamp or more before running uh, into side effects. And so we have the combination of a low therapeutic current strength uh, and a large therapeutic window, which at the end of the day is going to bring us uh, to have a wider uh, therapeutic window percentage. Moving from these uh, theoretical concepts uh, into the practical application uh, of how these concepts are captured and displayed uh, by the software platform called Informity, we can see an example of uh, how Informity presents the data collected. Uh, uh, for this case, uh, we are analyzing only the data collected from the level 2. In the first line, we have the level 2 considered as non-directional, so 2ABC. 
And in the second, third, and fourth line, uh, we have the comparison with uh, each one of uh, uh, the different uh, uh, segmented contexts. This is because uh, we are sorting by electrode number. So the data are presented starting from the omnidirectional configuration and then later followed by the letter A, B, and C. Let's analyze the therapeutic window from the omnidirectional configuration to ABC. We see that uh, we have a therapeutic current strength uh, starting at 2 milliamps uh, and uh, with a window that uh, is uh, 0.75. In fact, uh, the uh, side effects uh, uh, starts at 2.75 milliamps. This therapeutic window of, uh, of 0.75 uh, should be considered also for other parameters. Uh, the most important uh, is the window percentage. In fact, uh, if we see that uh, uh, we analyze the window percentage by uh, comparing the wideness uh, of uh, this window over the therapeutic current strength, uh, we see that the therapeutic window percentage in this case uh, is only 37%, which means that is not a good therapeutic window percentage, especially when compared with other configurations. And the third, uh, the third parameter that we want to analyze uh, is the power consumption. The power consumption is an automatic calculation that Informity does, uh, evaluating uh, the impedance of that specific level of stimulation, in this case uh, the average of the ABC, which are co-activated, and calculating how much power we will need to deliver in order to have an efficient stimulation setting if we decide to go with that configuration. And we can easily see from the power analysis that uh, uh, the power of this configuration is probably suboptimal. So, uh, in, uh, in a nutshell, uh, we can see that uh, the configuration 2ABC, even though at the first thought uh, it might be an acceptable uh, setting, uh, is actually a suboptimal setting because the window is uh, kind of small, uh, but uh, the window percentage is relatively small, is one of the smallest possible, and the power consumption uh, is uh, relatively high. If we ask uh, Informity to uh, rank other possibilities only by power consumption, uh, uh, we um, are going to see that uh, some contexts, uh, in this case uh, 2A, might have a very efficient power consumption. This is because the therapeutic current strength uh, uh, starts at 0.75, so we are very close to the soft spot uh, and the amount of energy required uh, to activate the soft spot uh, is minimal and this optimizes the power but also uh, informity takes into account also what are the impedances of each contact so in uh, also for similar therapeutic camera strength uh, we may have uh, one contact uh, having a better power compared to another contact uh, for the simple reason that the impedance might be lower However, if we evaluate only for power consumption, we may run into situations such as in the case of 2A, in which uh, uh, this contact is uh, actually not a good contact, uh, and that's because uh, we have a very narrow therapeutic window. The therapeutic window is only 25.25 milliamps, uh, which uh, uh, means that uh, the room for programming using this contact uh, is very limited. And this is captured by the fact uh, that the therapeutic window percentage is uh, very low. We are at 33%, so we are at the lowest therapeutic window percentage in this configuration. If we sort by window size, which means uh, taking into consideration only the amplitude of the therapeutic window, Informity presents uh, uh, the contact that you see as uh, uh, the one with the largest window size. This is, before, this is because uh, uh, the therapeutic camera strength uh, starts uh, at 2 and uh, the side effects start at 4, which gives us a window size of uh, 2 milliamps. And uh, uh, many clinicians may decide that uh, uh, based on this parameter, we can uh, select uh, one of the most effective uh, and uh, efficient uh, uh, contact. However, when it comes to efficiency, uh, we can take a look at the therapeutic window percentage and the power consumption uh, and realize uh, that uh, the window size uh, uh, may not be the best parameter to sort for. In fact, uh, if we take a look only at the window size, uh, we realize that the window size is starting at 2 milliamps versus a, a window size that may be smaller but starting at 1 milliamp can result in significantly different uh, uh, parameters in terms of power consumption. The power consumption, which is the amount of energy that we're going to deliver, and so 
uh, a parameter that is critical in evaluating the duration of the battery can become uh, two to three times higher based on uh, small differences uh, in the therapeutic current strength. So the window size uh, uh, may be one criteria to consider, but uh, is not uh, the uh, most important and should be uh, weighted also for other criteria. While uh, if we ask Informity to sort by window percentage, uh, we generally have uh, a situation that represents uh, overall the, the, uh, the most well-balanced uh, uh, between the uh, previous combination. So uh, if we ask Informity to sort by window percentage, uh, the first uh, uh, contact that is proposed uh, is uh, 2B. 2B uh, has the largest window percentage because as a therapeutic current strength uh, starting at 1 and uh, ending at 2.25, which uh, uh, gives us a therapeutic window percentage of 125%. If we look at this parameter, uh, this parameter uh, provides us uh, with uh, a relatively large therapeutic window, definitely something we can work with but also a very low power consumption, which means uh, uh, longest battery life. And uh, we know that uh, uh, this is a critical aspect to consider when uh, uh, performing uh, the brain stimulation programming. Finally, Informity has the possibility of setting a specific balance threshold. For instance, 60% of the therapeutic window percentage or uh, values that can be personalized up to 70% or 50% according to the personal preference. These thresholds uh, uh, does not only apply to the window percentage, but can be applied also to the uh, therapeutic window or to the power consumption, even though we generally recommend using the therapeutic window percentage uh, as the most balanced uh, uh, parameter to optimize the stimulation settings. In my personal opinion, uh, this tool is uh, particularly helpful as it provides uh, uh, all of those electrodes uh, that can be used in effective uh, configuration, both uh, as a single segment uh, activation, as in the case of directional electrodes, or ring activation, as in the case of non-directional electrodes, but even more importantly, in the selection of single segments uh, that can be compounded uh, into complex programming settings such as in the case uh, of uh, stack electrode configurations. In other words, Informity works uh, uh, using a very simple roadmap uh, uh, that uh, is based on uh, three steps. The first one uh, is uh, identifying uh, the best uh, uh, level of stimulation. So the best segmented level that can provide uh, uh, the greatest benefit uh, if we decide to move into the second aspect, which is uh, the aspect uh, of uh, prioritizing the single segment activation uh, to identify which one is the best direction of stimulation. So the direction that has uh, the widest uh, therapeutic window percentage. And finally, Informity also provides us uh, with uh, an integrated tool that automatically allows uh, to sort uh, by uh, specific parameters. The most efficient is uh, uh, the therapeutic window percentage, as we said, but we can also uh, keep an eye and uh, keep on monitoring uh, what will be the power consumption for uh, uh, that specific uh, configuration. And uh, with these aspects in mind, uh, we have all of the elements that can prompt uh, our decision uh, in choosing uh, uh, what is the most efficient uh, uh, single segment activation or combination of uh, different segments uh, in uh, creating uh, our strategies for efficient programming. And uh, this is my last slide. I would like to thank you all for your kind attention uh, and uh, please feel free to drop me an email for any additional questions uh, at uh, ristedmarola.hotmail.com or uh, at my institutional email address which is ristedmarola at osumc.edu. Thank you again and I hope this was useful.